Good evening, Dog Nation. How's everybody? This is Jeff Sintel. It's Wednesday night. We're watching the clock here a little bit. We had a technical difficulty or two to manage, but we've got a lot of stuff to show you tonight. As you see in the, uh, the crawl or the scroll, we have a conversation tonight, one-on-one uh, -on -one interview earlier today that I held with All-American wide receiver Kojo Antwi. Uh, Kojo is a guy that uh, we deem here, and here's a quick, quick, quick peek into what the top targets looks like, the Dog Nation before the Hedges. Weekly top targets list, Kojo Antwi is the number four target for the 2022 cycle right now on Before the Hedges uh, each week. That's the program you're watching right now. Thank you guys for joining us again on another Wednesday night. Uh, maybe it gives you guys, a couple of you guys, a, a chance to finish your supper. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody in Facebook land is doing well. Hope everybody in YouTube is doing well. Um, we've got a great conversation with Kojo Antwi. Uh, add Kojo Antwi's name uh, to the list of guys that thought about making a commitment in March and maybe were set to make a commitment in March that now they decided to hit the brake pedal. They decided to pump the brakes on what they were thinking about right now. We had a great conversation with Kojo Antwi out of Lambert High School in Georgia. Things to know. It's about 6'1". It's about 190 right now. Uh, I think he is a mercurial wide receiver, one of those explosive guys Georgia's got to have in this class. Uh, nation's number 13 wide receiver right now, number 94 overall. Uh, Kojo Antwi is born on a Monday, inspired by Julio Jones, wears the same <clears throat> Falcon shirt on Thursday nights on game days. Uh, it's a ritual going on six years right now. Only been playing football, really seriously playing football since the seventh and eighth grade. Great conversation with Kojo Antwi. I want you guys to get a listen to it right now here on Before the Hedges. The catch against West. When you look at that play now, what we'll, we'll goes What's the most what's the most wild thing about it when you look back at it now? That he caught it, that he got free, that he threw it. I mean, there's so many unbelievables in there. Um, I think me falling down, you know, and then getting back up, you know, really fast and you know, catching the ball and open space and, you know, trying to make something out of nothing, basically. But um, you know, that play was Crazy. Was that all instinct or was it just react? React. I think it was all react. Kojo, I think you're the eighth kid I know right now that put out there that, hey, I might make, I might be close to making a decision. And right. everybody in the world just, yeah. whether it's reporters or coaches or recruiters or whatever. Right. And then, I don't know, most of the majority of them are like, you know, what am I hurrying for? What do I need to wait for? Yeah. Like, what are you going through? Is that anything similar? Um. Yeah. I, you know, I had second thoughts, um, you know, I talked to my parents again, you know, at first they were, you know, supportive, you know, about me making the decision and, you know, the next week or so, but, um, you know, I talked to them again, you know, last week and they were telling me, you know, just let's pray about it and, you know, take some more time because there's no need to rush and, you know, that period's about to be lifted, you know, soon, so you know, let's just take our time, and, you know. So what you're looking for now is it? visits are open and then you'll, you'll do the, the three or four visits you absolutely need to take or what's that going to feel like for you? Um, yeah, so uh, I'm planning on making my decision on my mom's birthday on um, July 5th. So, um, you know, that June, that June month, I'm, I'm planning on taking, you know, four or five officials, you know, then making my decision in July. So let's get the most important part right here. What's your mom's first name? Martha. Martha Antwi? Yes. Why did you choose that? I mean, did you want to shoot off fireworks on the 5th, or why did you choose that day? Um, I think, you know, my mom means so much to me. You know, she, she's, she gives me advice, you know, every day. And, you know, she's a fighter. Um, she works, you know, crazy hours, you know, every day, and, you know, just to provide for us. And, you know, I just think it's really important to, you know, acknowledge my mom for, you know, all of this she's done for me, so. Big happy birthday gift. You'll give her four hundred thousand dollars worth of an education. <laughs> right. Uh, what would you say you still need to see to figure this out? You know, just in person. Um, you know, contact. You know, just meeting. You know, meeting the guys that you know could potentially be my coaches, and you know, just getting a feel for you know the campus and stuff. You know, just 
feeling the environment, getting you know, just getting to get, get, get just getting a feel for the environment. So, so I remember, I know my Kojo. I talked to you mid January, and you were like, I got, I got a select group of schools. I think it was twelve, maybe even ten. Eight. It was eight. Yes, and then you were like, Ohio State and Georgia are kind of right. standing out. And then that was even before Gunner. I know Gunner had already hinted to you what was going to happen that you had Georgia out there, but. So where is it? Where is it now? Is it much more complicated than that, or is it still those two? Or what are the is it four or five? I mean, what are the, who's it coming down to? Um, as of right now, I think it's you know I'm leaning towards A and M, um, Ohio State, Georgia. I think those three are you know the ones really standing out. Um, you know, but you know Alabama and USC are still you know still in the mix as well. Um, but you know I, I think it's just all going to come down to. Visiting and you know, getting a feel for place. To be clear, USC is Southern Cal. Right? Southern Cal. Not Southern Cal, South Carolina. Yeah, South, Southern Cal. Uh, I don't know if I've ever asked you about AM. What's the what's the angle there? What's the look there? I mean, you have family in Texas. Have you visited there before? What's the what's the connection there? Family in Texas. Um, I have my um oldest brother and um my sister there. Um, my brother's been there for about five years. Um, I spent quarantine in there, um, so you know we got to you know tour the campus and you know get a feel for it. Um, you know my brother lives like an hour away from College Station, so you know just being in Texas for you know about three months and you know getting a feel for that Texas life and you know getting to see the campus and stuff, you know something that really interests me. Uh, the current feelings with Georgia, what are they trying? What are they doing? I mean. Is it led by Gunner or is it Coach Hanks or is it a mixed thing? Um, yeah, I think it's led by Gunner. Um, I talk with Gunner every day. Um, I think it's Coach Hank as well. Um, Coach Smart, you know, he texts me here and there. Um, Coach Cochran, I think the whole coaching staff, honestly, um, been on a few Zooms. I was actually on a Zoom with them um, earlier this week, um, you know, just talking ball and stuff. But um, I think it's, I think the one leading right now is Gunner. You played with him for the first time, Myrtle Beach. What do you know about his game, and then what do you know about Oscar's game now? Um, Gunner, he can sling it. Uh, he can, he throws he throws pretty hard. Um, you know, just getting out there and you know him throwing to me. I mean, I, I feel like we already had a connection. Um, you know, we built that chemistry as the tournament. You know, you know progressed, but um, you know we already have good chemistry. Um, you know. He, he knows where I want the ball, and you know he knows where to put it. And you know, yeah. What about Oscar? Oscar. Not just a friend, though. Not just a friend. Um, you know, I'm with. You know, I hang out with him. You know, I talk with him. You know, all the time. But um, you know, just watching him play, how strong he is. You know, on the field, how he can create separation. You know, for him to move that. You know, fast. You know, at that size is. You know, special. Um, then again, you know, his strength is crazy, you know, his upper body strength, you know, he's able to move anybody and, you know, he's, he's a really good player. Do you have the potential trio type thing at any other school? Like do you have a quarterback and a receiver or a tight end like at A&M or Ohio State or Alabama? Or would that be unique if you did, if you did look at Georgia? Um, not any like, you know, set trio, you know, at any other school except for Georgia. I mean, I think the nylon, you know, at Georgia is, you know, I'm, I mean, the nylon, you know, is also added to that, you know, Quartet. trio. Yeah, so. Um, Coach, can you describe just the stress level it went up when it leaked out that you're close? Yeah. Did it almost complicate things because you expected, okay, I'm kind of cool with all this, and then everybody yeah. just coming with both guns, right? Yeah. As soon as, you know, the news got out, um, you know, Got texts from, you know, coaches about, you know, them saying that you cutting me out and stuff like that. And I was just, you know, I was just overwhelmed with everything. And, you know, coaches started calling me and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I was just overwhelmed with everything just happening. But, um, you know, I started to calm down and started to, you know, get myself back together and, you know, talk to my parents and stuff like that. So. And now you're doing what? Eight zooms a week or something or what? Yeah, something like that. <laughs>
Uh, Coach, what do you want for your senior year? Do you want to get this? I mean, does that make sense for you to figure it out in July? That way it's a stress-free senior year? Oh, yeah, that's that's the plan. Um, yeah, so um, I just wanted to get it, you know, get it over with before my senior year so I don't have to worry about anything and just be committed in the season. So, you know, just get it out the way. Um, we're back. And that was uh, Kojo Antwi. Like I said before, at the open of our show, major target. He's a number four guy on the before the hedges top targets this week. Listen to that. Did you guys let's roll back that interview? A couple things. Uh, you guys have a question. Facebook Nation, Dog Nation, YouTube, Facebook Nation, YouTube. Uh, please drop them in the comment section. There are a few things there. You heard comments on Oscar Dell. You had heard his thoughts on Gunnar Stockton. He said that Gunnar Stockton was basically leading the charge for Georgia's recruiting. Gunnar basically speaks to, finds a way to get in contact and speak to Kojo Antwi every day. And if you guys saw the highlight film and those reels right there, uh, the guy's a thoroughbred. He is a impressive, impressive high school prospect. I think he checks every box, um, especially with Georgia looking for more explosive targets, game breakers, impact guys, uh, guys that can take it to the house. Um, you, know, you saw that first clip over and over in that video package, especially the first thing. We talked about it, that that play. He catches the ball where he's basically on all fours, and uh, he takes it to the house. Uh, just an impressive, impressive play. Uh, I think the thing that interesting stands out to me is, is he has he, – he wants to get it, his decision done on July 5th. That's to, uh, to Arthur – it is in order to honor his mother, Martha Antwi. Uh, but – uh, July 5th, that's going to be the day he makes his commitment. And really, he's got five schools. It's USC um, uh, and it's Alabama. But there, it sounds like there's a lot of Texas A&M, Georgia, and Ohio State there. Three incre incredibly um, great fits for Kojo and Twee. But uh, he also mentioned that part. Let's roll that back. Everybody remember that part where I was asking him about – I said, are there any other trios uh, like, like at Ohio State? Do you have good relationships with a, another quarterback and a receiver uh, at A&M or at Zone 6 for Ohio State? That one's for you, Evan. Uh, I know if you're uh, watching, uh, watching it from Columbus and Buckeye land, you know what Zone 6 is about with wide receivers for Ohio State. But uh, he said, uh, no, not a trio. But then he added another name. He added the Nylon Moore set into that as well. Uh, as a potential quartet of a guys that he would really like to play with or could play with and feel quite chummy playing with at Georgia. I thought that was very interesting in that Kojo and tweet interview. Um, let me see some, I've gotten some feedbacks from folks that I, that I, they want more questions and more Q and a portions of our, um, in our shows. So I'm going to try and do that right now. Uh, Joel Moody makes a point that he says, I think with parts of the country starting to open up, these players are excited about the possibility of taking some official visits. This is their future and taking visits has to be a big part and a fun part of their recruiting journeys. It's easy to see why they are postponing their commitment dates. Nice point there, Joel. I, I think the other thing to think about here is um, it, it's kind of so close for them right now. They've waited so long. They've waited over a year to take their visits. And really for a lot of these guys, it's really, there's really no rush at all. And the other thing we've seen uh, I think Penn State, West Virginia, they've started creating edits for some of their top targets. Um, and those edits are coming out now as, uh, you know, they're scheduling official visits. I think I saw some things on social media today where Central Florida is scheduling their team camps and some other, other, other evaluation weekends as well to get prospects back on campus. Um, always intriguing. And it's exciting, guys. For me, it's exciting to see that, the, the gears are slowly starting to fire up again for uh, what we know to be the normal cycle and the normal, the normal things for college football recruiting. Uh, we got a lot to get to in our show. I wanted you to get that interview with Kojo and Twee, uh, fresh off the grill, so to speak. He's a great guy to talk to. And I thank him and the fine staff there at Lambert high school for their time uh, earlier today. We spoke to Kojo and Twee earlier today. So that's about as, um, live local and late breaking as we can give it to you guys here on dog nation before the hedges. Of course, this is brought to you by our fine folks, friends at Kroger. Um, 
This is the part of our show where everybody wonders, is it about time for Brandon Adams to tell us a little bit about Kroger and to hear that classic uh, Kroger, that classic dog nation pitch man uh, working the magic with those, uh, those, those velvety pipes here on dog nation on before the hedges. And I think right now is a perfect time uh, for another special message from Kroger. We'll get back to the show in just a moment, but first a quick word from Kroger. Kroger has made shopping for the groceries and household essential items that you need even easier by offering free pickup. Just shop online, choose a pickup time convenient for you, and Kroger will carefully pick out your order and bring it to your vehicle when you arrive. So the next time you're ready to shop at Kroger, take advantage of the free pickup. It's just another way that Kroger is fresh for everyone. There you go. Just another way that Kroger is fresh for everyone. Uh, that's right, like my Brandon says. And that was a fresh interview today with uh, Kojo Antwi out of Lambert High School. Uh, now's the time on our program. I want to show you a few things. Uh, let's do something a little out of order here. And I think I think the strike throughs, I don't know if, if we, we, we recreated them the graphic wise, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Like we, 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 over the last few weeks, we've put together a list of dates to remember, which are the times that guys are deciding. Um, let's pull that up right now and take a look at it. You know, of course you have Emmanuel Henderson at, uh, Emmanuel Henderson, uh, out of Alabama at March 13th. And then you had March 15th. You had, uh, on March 15th, you had uh, Mikael Williams strike through that one. Uh, then you still have March 25th. That's Malachi Starks. That's a new one since we spoke last week. And then March 28th uh, is Jalen Walker. And then April the 4th, strike through that one. Uh, Kojo Antu was also pr pretty much level, level setting on thinking he was going to make his commitment in March as well. That one never even showed up on the board because he didn't set an official date. And then also you have uh, – Kristen Miller, April 4th, strike through that one. That guy's also backing things up there. And then you go forward to May the 7th for uh, Emory Floyd out of Hillgrove High School. Very interesting to see what's happening um, happening right there with um, the dates there for <clears throat> Mikel Williams and Miller. I think with those two guys, what's happening there is um, I think there's very much going to work in concert here. They're going to take a lot of visits together. They do want to play together. And I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a situation here where they want to, just wait till everything opens up. They're so close right now. Everybody says they're so close. Everybody's got to remember, you got 20 more days in March and you've got all of April to get to. So it's still much less all of May to get to as well. So it's still about two and a half months, but everybody's deciding, hey, we've waited already a, already a full year for visits. What's another two and a half months? Um, interesting to think about right there. Let's take a look at... Um, you know, the other things I want to show you this week, let's start with our top targets. Um, got some variants. I like that word, variants. We've got some variants to the list this week. Um, looking at uh, what's going on right now, we have a new a new name. We, we, went, we shrunk it down to 12 this week, but we are adding some more names to know on uh, the back half of this, which is our Others that are you're basically in the hopper or definitely names of, to keep warm in your memory bank there. Number 12, it's a new name. It's the Nylon Morissette out of Brookwood, Snellville, Georgia. Wide receiver. Connections to Gunnar Stockton. Connections to uh, the Nylon Morissette. The Nylon Morissette has connections to Oscar Dell and Kojo Antwi on um, the same seven-on-seven seven list. For the Nylon Morissette, it was huge that um, – uh, Gunnar Stockton did shows, choose Georgia. Those two have played together for the last three years. The Nylon certainly believes in Gunnar's ability as a quarterback. Number 11, a name that was on this list last week, is Tyler Booker, number 11 on our top targets this list this week. Tyler is a very sharp young man out of IMG Academy. He is a Connecticut native. Uh, a lot of big schools are in there for him. Penn State, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Georgia, Florida, uh, a lot of big schools there. I think he's has the potential to be the highest rated offensive line signee for Georgia in this class. I think he's right around number 43 overall, right behind Mikel Williams. Number 10, another name that keeps staying on this list is Traquan Figgins out of Oxford in Oxford, Alabama. Six foot two and some change, very long, uh, very fast corner playmaker. Uh, plays all over the field for Oxford High and one of the uh, 
Uh, they play click class 6A football in Alabama. Number nine is Daniel Martin out of Marietta, Georgia. Is he an outside linebacker? Is he a defensive back? I think he's going to wind up being a defensive back uh, should he choose uh, to show up to, to, to sign and perform at a program like a Georgia or a Clemson or other schools he has in mind there. I think that's just what he looks like to me. He looks like a defensive back, a bigger defensive back. Uh, number eight, uh, we wrote about him on Dog Nation earlier this week. Did you guys see the story about the roommate? Uh, when I was talking to Gunner, it was really funny because Gunner just has a way. I tried to convey it in my uh, copy that we wrote about on, I think it was yesterday, last night on dognation.com. But, you know, Gunner sometimes in his own, you know, simple ways, you know, I was asking him about Delp and, you know, how he would fit in the offense and what he's seen out of him so far that he really likes. And Gunner was like, yeah, man, I see all that. But really, man, I'm just looking at a roommate right now. I think he might be a good roommate material. And, you know, somehow Gunner finds a way with that Northeast Georgia country boy uh, type, type outlook and perspective and wisdom where he just makes it all seem very simple. It's like, no, he's not looking for an All-American yet. No, he's not looking for, uh, you know, a great package deal or a great trio to put together. You know, for Gunner, he's just thinking, man, I need a roommate. That, that's really what I need right now. I don't need 10 touchdown catches or for him to break the chains on the Georgia fan base's statistical thresholds for what a tight end can do anymore uh, in the University of Georgia. He just, just wants a roommate. And Bill kind of told me that, uh, you know, Gunner's actually the neat and tidy one. They got a chance to room together earlier this month on uh, one of their seven-on-seven road trips to a tournament in Myrtle Beach, and everything uh, went so went very well at that part. Uh, number seven on our list is Jeremiah Alexander. That's out of Thompson and Alabaster, Alabama. He is a five-star defensive end or linebacker. Number six, this is the guy that's going to make his decision, and it's been reported that he's going to make it around 2 p.m. on Saturday. Emmanuel Henderson. I think I read a Rivals.com report where Emmanuel said that he has uh, not made up his mind yet. I think the principals here are Clemson, Alabama, Auburn, and Georgia. If Emmanuel Henderson goes Georgia, I know it would be celebrated across Dog Nation. If he doesn't choose Georgia, I think it makes the running back pecking order look a little bit easier. I don't think Emmanuel Henderson was the top target. Uh, It hasn't been on this list, but I think Emmanuel Henderson would be a great piece that Georgia would have loved to have. I've had in this class and, you know, whatever Emmanuel Henderson decides to do on Saturday, it makes the Georgia running pack picture less complicated. That's the simplest way I can say that. Uh, Number five is uh, Jalen Walker, really high on this young man. Uh, When we last spoke to Jalen last week, Jalen said he's got a six, but it's really down three. Uh, He's looking at three schools there. Um, If I was a, Guessing, man, I would say the three schools are the three schools he got to take a self-guided visit to recently, or not, maybe not so recently, but the ones he's taken self-guided visits to, that would be Clemson, North Carolina, and Georgia. I think he's a fantastic player. I think he'd be the type of player that Georgia, I think I wrote, uh, if you guys saw that, when I wrote it um, Monday, when published on Monday, it was like how potentially big March could be before all this cold feet started happening, and really, I don't think cold feet's the way to say that. I think the better term is everybody just decided why to rush things. But um, I think I think with 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 Jalen Walker, should he choose the University of Georgia, you're going to get somewhere between what we've already seen from uh, the Kobe Dean right now through two seasons so far in Athens, somewhere between that and then somewhere approaching what Rokon Smith showed the University of Georgia during his fine seasons in Athens. I think, I think Jalen Walker has that type of ability. Number four, we mentioned him. We saw that conversation in the first half of our show with Kojo Antwi uh, out of Lambert in um, Forsyth County. I don't know why it says Swanee, Georgia right there. But um, number three, Branson Robinson, Germantown, Madison, Mississippi. A very strong young man. We keep talking about him and his abilities. Uh, the way he breaks tackles, the way he looks like a grown man out on the field. Powerlifter, state powerlifting champion, had a brilliant uh, junior season in just eight games in Mississippi. Uh, very impressive looking man, young man. And you've seen how his ratings have uh, spiked considerably um, with the re rankings from rivals in 24 7 over the last couple of months. Uh, Branson Robinson has been a part of Georgia's uh, top targets in this program uh, dating back to late December, early January. Uh, number two, Mikael Williams. Mikael's going to um, back up his decision. We had a report on that on Dog Nation. Really, uh, the second he announced it, 
Uh, Mikel was probably, uh, maybe not the second, but within like five to 10 minutes. Uh, Mikel was angling. He's not really sure about when his new target date might be. He told me time will tell, but he does have a dear younger sister. I think she's two years old, uh, two going on three, whose birthday is in August. He said that might be the next timeline for him to look for in terms of making his uh, college decisions. Same schools, uh, Southern Cal, Kentucky, LSU, Georgia, Florida. Uh, those are basically the schools in there. He said Clemson was in there as well. Uh, Mikael Williams. And then number one, uh, the guy that announced over the weekend that he's going to make his decision in front of his community in Jefferson, Georgia. Malachi Starks is going to do it to honor his father on his birthday. Larry Starks, his dad, has made such a tremendous difference in his life. And uh, Malachi is going to choose to honor his father on that day. Uh, other big names to know, uh, Lockdown Allen. I think you see a lot of him in seven on sevens. I think he, he could be a safety I think he could be a, a, a nickel type guy. I think he could be a star type guy. I think he could be a corner. Uh, Jordan Lockdown Allen. Uh, another guy to look at there is Marcus Allen out of Walton High in Marietta, Georgia. Very impressive uh, cornerback. Uh, also one of the most pop, one of the most, uh, I guess I would say pop culture or one of the most uh, hip young men I've seen in a while. I saw him rocking a Nirvana shirt the other day on his way to practice. This guy also likes anime. He knows about the great uh, Hall of Fame tailback, Marcus Allen. Uh, you know, Marcus Allen, very intriguing young man. Very, 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 very witty guy and a very fun guy to have a conversation with. Emory Floyd, that's Ferrari Floyd, just picked up a big offer from Maryland this week. Uh, Ferrari Floyd is going to make his decision on May the 7th. That's also to honor a family member. Uh, we've written about Jordan James before. Addison Nichols, now we spoke to him recently uh, it'll be a, a, a forthcoming story on dognation.com, but Addison Nichols, uh, you know, he grew up a Tennessee fan, but he's still hearing a lot from Georgia. Uh, Georgia's still recruiting him. Most of the schools that are recruiting him, the ones that are recruiting him heavily, see him as one of those flexible Swiss Army knife type linemen, a guy that can play all across the, all across the front. I don't know if he's really ready to play center yet. He hasn't, he hasn't snapped a lot yet, but uh, Addison Nichols would be a guard. Uh, tackle type guy. He's about 6'5", 320 now. He's grown a little bit. Uh, I mean, Addison Nichols, I mean, he's a, he's a second degree black belt, although he hasn't done anything karate wise in the last four or five years. Um, he's an Eagle Scout. He's a 4.0 GPA guy. Um, he can play the guitar, ukulele, other things like that. You want to talk about a cultured, savvy, all around dude. Uh, that would be Addison Nichols out of Greater Atlanta Christian. Sam Mbake, that's another guy, another big receiver, an All-American out of Brookwood in Snellville, Georgia. Uh, I want to make sure you guys know about these two five-stars in the middle. Of course, we're going down alphabetical order, but you see five-star Sean Murphy. That's the inside linebacker out of Manassas, Virginia. Uh, Georgia is in concert in constant contact with uh, Sean Murphy. And then a name that, that's popped up uh, over the last couple of weeks, that's Walter Nolan out of uh, uh, Cordova, Tennessee. He was at IMG Academy with Walter Nolan. Uh, George, he's announced that Georgia is kind of back in the mix there. It seems Georgia has now reinvigorated itself with recruiting uh, the five-star defensive tackle. There's some names that fall off this list. Travis Shaw, he fell off this list. And it seems like Travis Shaw, the five-star defensive tackle, is going to go either to North Carolina or Clemson. But now Walter Nolan is a name that has kind of uh, crept its way back up on this list. Uh, another name to think about is Jake Pope out of Buford. That's a three-star safety. Plays receiver and safety, but I, I think he would be a safety at, um, at his premium position in the SEC. Keon Sab, that's the nation's number one or number two safety, depending on who you're looking at. Uh, Quayshon Sapp out of Lee County, another offensive line kind of name to know for this class. Uh, Shamar Stewart out of Opelika, Florida. He performed. We didn't really – uh, he went through drills at the Under Armour Regional in South Florida. He said a lot of nice things about Georgia. A lot of folks down there are reporting and saying that he wants to leave the state. About the only reason he would stay in the state is if Miami won a bunch of games this year. He wants to see a really strong season out of Miami. But, you know, schools like LSU, uh, Georgia, those guys, Alabama, those schools have always been in the mix for Shamar Stewart. Uh, the four-star running back, Tevin White, is another name to consider there. At one time, he was getting crystal ball picks to Georgia as well. Um, wide receiver, Antonio Williams, at a Dutch fork in Irmo, South Carolina. 
And then another safety. What's Georgia doing there with safety? Kamari Wilson out of ING Academy. That's another five-star safety to think about as well. Let's take a quick look at the recruiting breakdown. Uh, trying to rip through all this stuff right now. Georgia's currently number three nationally with its eight commits. There's one guy on offense. You guys all know that is a gentleman, Gunner Stockton out of Raven County. Uh, seven uh, commitments on defense. All seven of those are uh, – there's seven of those on defense, but there's also seven in-state commitments, one out-of-state commitment. The out-of-state commitment would be ba Big Bear Alexander. Two five-stars at this time, Gunner Stockton and Dayon Bowie. You go to top 100 guys, that Stockton, Bowie, West, Alexander, Groves, Killebrew. Uh, they're all eight commits for Georgia are now in the SEC footprint. I uh, want to jump really quickly into uh, the, the online chatter and everything else for this week. We've got uh, a bunch of names uh, to really quickly uh, speed through right here. I think the first one I want to show you, uh, it's a guy we're also going to write about this week on uh, dognation.com. It's Pierce Sperling III. Now, I think he's a third or fourth generation Georgia Bulldog. Uh, Pierce Sperling um, – was at the Under Armour camp, the same Under Armour camp that a lot of these guys were at, where Shamar Stewart was at, the Pierce Sperling. And, guys, you only get, like, so many reps at these uh, at these camps, uh, and so you got to make them count. You know, everybody maybe will get three or four good reps against somebody. And look at this one from Pierce Sperling. He's tweeted it out. This is a Georgia commitment in the 2023 class. He's 6'6". He's about – 215, 220, great basketball player has been offered by already a growing number of schools to play both football and basketball. Basketball, folks, is actually his first love. Watch him reach out, and he's held. He basically does this thing with his webs, his Velcro webs with one hand, makes that stab there, one-handed catch. I mean, this is so nice. Uh, Michael, in our uh, back in our control room, can play it twice. Uh, so nice. You got to see it twice. Look at Pierce Sperling comes off the line, gets to the top of his route. Is he going to break it inside? Is he going to break it outside? Um, you see him just basically held and just make the stab and that thing locked on like a tractor beam. Pierce Sperling, the third uh, tight end commitment, flex in commitment, uh, multi-generational uh, Georgia family right now, right there. He grew up going to Sanford stadium every Saturday in the fall. Um, Great, great clip there. Uh, let's go through a couple of things. Let me show you the first one. And I hope you guys are going to go like, man, I don't know if Jeff has ever made a basketball, a really strong basketball take on before the hedges. Maybe it would be before the stag. If you guys like that quick play on words. But look at this tweet. Now, this is a six foot nine big man uh, out of Arizona. He's at a prep school in Arizona. His name is Michael Foster. Don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. This is his top three. Now, look at this. You got Tom Kareen's Bulldogs. You got Florida State, which is probably the best team in the ACC uh, this year. Maybe one of the top programs in the ACC, top two, top three over the last two years. But uh, you've got a top three of Georgia, Florida State. And then all that sounds right. And most Georgia basketball fans are thinking, wow, being a top three with Florida State is, is really moving on up the list. And that's some – rarefied air for uh, Tom Green's program. But then look at option three. That's the, that's the NBA G League, the D League, Developmental League. So you've got NBA D League, Florida State, and Georgia. I mean, I, you can't make that up. I thought that was a very, very curious uh, tweet there by Mr. Foster about including uh, going pro to the NBA in terms of the, uh, the top three there. Um, let's roll through a couple of tweets. Yeah, I wanted you guys to see them. Uh, this is a Christian Miller tweet, uh, Trench King. That's how you guys had a chance to visit with Christian Miller last week. Didn't really seem like he was a guy that was thinking he was uh, a little melancholy or reflective about his decision. Uh, but Trench King, uh, Christian Miller, good guy there, has decided to back up his decision. Same thing there for Mikel Williams. Those guys did it on back-to-back -back days. Uh, Christian made his decision on Monday night and then on Tuesday afternoon, uh, Mikel Williams also decided to postpone his commitment. And then another guy, while we're in the theater of uh, everybody hitting the brakes and hitting the stop sign, uh, Malachi Starks has decided, and he's even going to do it in front of his community on March 25th, is going to make his decision. And you guys know uh, we went through the top targets there, Malachi Starks. Number one on this list, then number one on this list. If you guys read the, the Dog Nation Sunday special earlier this year, 
uh, you really saw all the reasons and all the qualities that make up why I think Malachi Starks is, is number one on this list and deservedly so. Uh, that's what you got uh, right there. What'd you guys think about? It was a good get a chance to, to hear from Kojo and Tweet. Uh, I'm going to basically uh, go through all the information. I'm going to put a story up on dognation.com. If it's not up tonight, it will be up uh, sometime very early in the morning. Uh, everything you guys wanted to know there about what's going on with Kojo and Twee right now. Um, let me take a quick look. Alicia Lane, thanks for watching. Lisa Rid Ridley Baldridge um, and, and Johnson Sprayberry, Jerry Still. Thanks, guys, everybody for watching. Of course, this 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 weekly uh, Before the Hedges show becomes a podcast every week. If you can find it on the uh, Apple Podcast platform, you can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on Spotify. Uh, hopefully you guys have seen something you enjoyed in this program. If you wouldn't mind giving us a like, uh, we'd certainly appreciate that as well. Um, now, question time. Uh, question time. Jermaine King makes a plea uh, with his uh, very cool Superman sigil uh, for Malachi to stay home. Got the x-ray vision and everything. Uh, Junior Baker, how are you doing tonight, sir? Got the old school. Jermaine King, you might not know this, but you got the old school uh, action comics. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, old school Superman S there. Uh, Matt Stafford, hey, thanks for joining us. Terry Schnell and Johnson Sprayberry, thank you for still watching. Drew Jones. Um, Georgianne Olive, a top fan badge still intact. She says she went to Ohio State. Worst day was the day it snowed. On St. Patrick's Day as a native Savannah, and he found that very depressing. Uh, you know, I lived in Savannah for uh, three or four years. It was really fun. I actually had a place um, about a block away from the beach uh, on Tybee, away from the Tybee Bend, um, when I was a cub reporter back in the day for the Savannah Morning News. Um, let me see. Chris Thomas, uh, Tennille Calvino, thank you for watching as well. Let me see what's going on on YouTube. Uh, let me see this. How about the next, uh, the next, um, I want to make sure I get through five questions at least. Uh, Noah Sheldon, how do you, how are you not certain I've already not done that? John Anthony wants to know, how is Dog Nation feeling about 2021? Well, John, I think I'll answer that question. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, the, here's the thing that's different about 2021 compared to a lot of previous years is normally uh, Georgia and Kirby Smart go very slow. They drive very slow in their lane on their evaluations. You normally only see Georgia around number eight, nine, or ten at this time of year. I think this time a year ago they were probably in the teens – uh, to see them number three overall was a definite needs basis uh, way to do things, accepting a lot of commitments a lot more earlier than they did because there wasn't going to be an evaluation period. And for Georgia to already be number three, uh, when they ended up number four last year, I believe, uh, that's a really good start to the 2021 class. Um, I, saw a, uh, I saw a question here from Zach Hicks. Uh, Zach wants to know, why isn't a wide receiver in the top targets? Uh, Zach, actually, there's two. There's Kojo and Tweet at number four, who our program tonight was centered around. And then number 12, a new guy in the uh, top targets list was the Nyland Morissette. All those guys that you were watching uh, going through the rest of those uh, names right there were the guys that were just off the mark. I wouldn't call them honorable mentions, but those are the guys right on the cusp of cracking into the top targets list. Um, Noah, yeah, we've already interviewed Jordan James as well. Tristan West, you guys are identifying why, why there's a couple of names that the safety, you know, you got Kamari Wilson down there, you got Keon Sab. I, for one, think uh, Malachi Starks would be a safety at the next level, especially a free safety. You can see him doing a lot of things with cover two, working to the boundary, covering a lot of ground, and then also coming up and being such a sure tackler in space. Uh, Malachi could do that. Now, a lot of analysts, and I don't think it's a reckless projection. I just think it's um, an interesting projection how they're thinking he's going to be able to put up on, on enough weight to be an inside linebacker or a linebacker 
uh, at the next level. Zach, it's quite all right. I'm just trying to make sure you're not uh, fearful that there are no top target. There are no wide receivers in the top targets list. There are actually two there. Usually I've tried to make sure that there were two in this list at all times. If you guys are looking at the top targets list for this week, you see a couple of things. You saw um, Brendan Thompson starting to really drift out. You still don't see the name Kevin Coleman yet out of uh, Illinois. I don't out of Illinois. I'm not certain that things are percolating with those guys enough to keep them or to move them onto our list. Jazz Jackson on YouTube, man, giving us an Ed Orgeron uh, question. And, and what, what do you guys think about the new news this week out of LSU? Subsequent uh, release from his contract of Les Miles at Kansas. Subsequent, uh, I guess, resignation or dismissal of the AD at Kansas. Um, I tell you what, there's a lot of bad publicity right now in a lot of areas around LSU football. Did you guys see the, the sit-in this week where the students were blocking uh, the cars and the players from the LSU facility? From They wanted them to walk around campus. It was an example of an organized student protest. Uh, Eddie Kennison, the player, the director of player – I one of their player development uh, personnel folks actually came out to the uh, parking lot and kind of pleaded with the students to move, uh, and they decided not to do so. Uh, just a lot of things going on there around the LSU program. Let's see. Uh, what else we got here? I want to try and make sure if I can catch. Uh, Buck Brinson, hey, thanks for the kind words there, man. It's just the work that I have. Uh, everything. It's just what we do. Um, not a bad job. Very blessed to have this job, actually. Uh, Sonia Prescott. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Uh, Jermaine King is the king uh, from Tenille Calvino. Lorenzo Bishop, Jana Harless. Thanks to everybody for watching. Um, let me see what's coming up. So this weekend, here's what's coming up. You've got um, a bunch of seven on sevens going on right now. There's a major seven on seven that's going to take place in Carrollton. There's another one that's going to take place in the Atlanta area. Uh, next weekend, you're going to have an Under Armour camp. You're going to have another seven on seven down at IMG Academy. Uh, this is the time of year where a lot of things start popping off. Later this month, you're also going to have the Atlanta MVP camp. So a lot of things that are happening as everybody starts to move forward uh, with the college recruiting timeline and everybody starts taking those couple more steps towards what things used to, with the way things used to be, uh, and the way things, uh, can't wait to, we, we, the way we can't wait to get back to what the way things were. Anyway, I'm Jeff Sintel before the hedges. That is our Wednesday night program. Apologies to everyone for starting a couple clicks late tonight. We had a technical difficulty, uh, with that Kojo and Twee interview, we wanted to try to do things a different way, but then we had to just show you uh, a lot of audio and then a lot of his highlights over the top. We should be able to have a different version of that interview up on our uh, YouTube platform and also on dognation.com sometime in the coming days. Um, that's, that's something to also uh, be on the lookout for. Um, Anyway, guys, another Wednesday night. I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to thank uh, Kroger for everything they do to sponsor our content, especially the Before the Hedges program and uh, everything they do here at Four Dog Nation. Next time you drive through and you, you know, you're driving through your community and you feel like you, know, you just don't have enough groceries, maybe you need a little bit more ice cream, maybe you need a little bit more fresh produce. I, I know uh, – we just made a bunch of uh, roasted cauliflower and sauteed mushrooms this week um, here at the Sintel home, and it was very tasty. Uh, of course, those groceries were came to our home from Kroger. Sometimes you go click list. Sometimes you go drive up. Just depends on what's happening each week. You just never know. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the program. Hope you got a chance to hear the latest from Kojo and Tweet. Guys, that stuff's not even on dognation.com yet. You guys got to hear it first. You guys will get to read about it a little bit later as well. Uh, check out tomorrow. So we don't have a cover for tomorrow. We've got another written piece of cover for interesting topic. Uh, again, this week uh, for cover for on dog nation, Brandon Adams is tomorrow on a Thursday night. And I've, I've got, I've got a little birdie telling me there'll also be another interesting guest this week on 
on the beat on Friday night with Mike Griffith. You guys make sure you pay attention to that. And also make sure you pay attention to dognation.com for all things going on on Georgia football, Georgia recruiting. Uh, it seems like there's always a busy news cycle when it comes to things Georgia. That's why you guys are here on this program and all of our Dog Nation social channels every night, catching up with the latest of Dog Nation. Uh, I'm Jeff Sintel. I've been your host tonight. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see everybody again later on the pages of dognation.com. Have a blessed night. And have a great week, everybody. <laughs>